At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify the approach to processing natural language, determine the goal of linguistic science, and appreciate the approach to processing the natural language. When you talk to a friend, there are times when you realize that the way he uses words and how they are arranged to form sentences are different from yours, of course, because the first could be, or the, or the first is that you were born at different places, you have different languages, and you have different experiences. So because of this, sometimes you do not understand each other. So how much more if you talk to someone who came from a different place and who has a different linguistic orientation. So with this situation, our understanding of linguistic science, wherein natural language processing is a part of, is very important. So maybe at this point, you would like to ask me, Joseph, what is the goal of linguistic science? What is this? So linguistic science aims to characterize and explain the many aspects of linguistic observations that are happening around us. So these observations can be found in conversations, it can be found in formal and informal writings, and it can also be found in other forms of communication or communications that use the natural language. So as we go along with our course in natural language processing, we will be able to understand more and learn more and identify more the different linguistic observations, okay? So in processing the natural language, there are actually three aspects that we have to put into considerations. So the first aspect is that it is cognitive. So what's the meaning of this? So because cognition is involved, this aspect deals with our capacity to acquire. Let me write that, acquire. Okay, do you still remember the, the time when you first spoke your first word? It has something to do with produce. And, of course, because we are human beings and we have brain, so we have the ability to understand spoken language or the natural language okay so again let me repeat that it is cognitive because it deals with our capacity to acquire produce and understand a certain language then the second aspect is that it is the relationship between linguistic utterance and the world so what this means is how we use the natural language to express what we think and what we feel in connection to the experiences we have with the world. Okay, so I think we have two right experiences. Okay, so that is why I have said a while ago that your experiences in life may affect what kind of language. It could be formal or, inf or informal language. It could be a street language that you're going to use to communicate with other people. So, for example, when you were born in a certain depressed area, the kind of language you have is different from the one who is born in, shall we say, a high-end subdivision. So, that is how your experience can affect the kind of language you use and how you use that kind of language. Okay, so this is the reason why when we go to another place, especially a foreign land, we learn that their language conventions to show respect, joy, love, and sadness, among others, are different from ours, or, or it could be different from yours too. So I am sure you have experienced the, uh, this kind of situation already. So if you have not yet visited a foreign land, it could be a certain place in your country which is far from your place. And even with a certain places from or places in your in your country different places have different language conventions to like for example the expressions the inflections used or even the the, the 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 structures of the language okay so 
after learning number two, let's go to number three. So our third aspect concerns with the language or linguistic structures. So our understanding of this aspect is important because this structure provides the vessel in which to form and combine words in comprehensive pattern. So this is the reason why the linguistic structure of English language is different from other languages, although there could be some kind of similarities. So for example, in, in the English language, the basic structure of a sentence is subject verb plus predicate. So let me write that. So we have subject, okay, then we have verb, verb, then we have predicate or we have an object for example okay so when we combine verb and object together to form a predicate okay so for example we have this sentence john okay john writes A song okay so our subject here is John our verb here is writes and our object here is a song of course in your language it could be different the structure could be very different this may not be subject verb plus object it could be object subject verb it depends upon what kind of language you are speaking so you may compare the structure to the structure of your mother tongue. So please write in the comment below what your language you are speaking, especially your, your mother tongue and the basic structure you have. So in English, basically, we have this subject verb, then we have the object. So this, this makes our discussion more meaningful. So this is the reason why there are rules that are used to understand the pattern of linguistic expressions. So when we say pattern, okay, so it, it concerns the, the grammar structure for sentences or when we say words, when we deal with words, then it has something to do with how we expand words. Okay, so expand, I don't know if you're familiar with we have the suffixes and we have the prefixes. Prefixes. Or, or we call them derivations. So as we go along with our discussions, we will be learning more about patterns or sentence patterns. We will be learning more about word expansions or word derivations. We will be learning about suffixes and prefixes. So if you would like to know more, please don't forget to click the subscribe button below and especially that bell button so you will be able to receive notifications of our future lessons. So as we go along with this course, we will be able to understand these structures more. So, so in the English language, there are lots of syntactics or syntactical rules or grammatical rules. So in our course, before we divide sentences into being grammatical and ungrammatical, we will first understand the commonly used patterns in the language, okay? So with this, we're going to use statistics as our counting tools. So let me write that. Okay. So we're going to use statistics as our count counting tool to identify linguistic patterns and to, of course, to count how many patterns we have. So at this point, I know what is going on in your mind. You may want to ask me, so Joseph, why do we have to use statistics to understand the natural language processing? What's the connection of this concept to the natural language processing? So the answer is we use statistics to build our scientific foundation. Let me write that. Okay. Scientific foundation. So again, we use statistics to build our scientific foundation. So basically, the scientific foundation refers to probability theory. 
So I have a lesson on that, probability theories. So I'm going to put the link in the description below. So please review and study that lesson properly. So for you to be able to understand the scientific foundation of natural language processing. So, but of course, our approach is not that scientific. It could be rigorous or a simple process. So we will deal with our NLP task or natural language processing projects or tasks in building the statistical models of language. So with this, we will be able to understand how practicality and validity of language affect our communication. After all being said and done, let's try this. What is the goal of linguistic science? What are the three aspects of processing natural language? How should we approach natural language processing? Please leave your comments or your answers in the comment below so we could discuss properly and we could have a very rich interaction. So do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.